Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Dustin Abbott from Emmanuel Lighthouse United Pentecostal Church here in Petawawa, Ontario, Canada, and I am here for your Wednesday morning devotion. I am going to talk to you about being an ambassador of heaven here today, and I want to read to you just a quick passage from the book of Ephesians, Paul writing in Ephesians 6, 19. He says, Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. For thousands of years, nations have exchanged ambassadors. An ambassador is a representative of the sovereign or the government, an agent of the government that goes to live in a different nation and is a method of communication and of communicating the values, the will, the intent of the nation for whom they represent. They become the official voice of the government, and so diplomatic communication means that word is given through from the, the home government or sovereign through the ambassador, and he often will be the one, he or she will be the one to go to speak to the representatives of the government of the nation in which they are hosted to communicate those values. And often if there is a you know some kind of, of agreement that is being made, it will be through the diplomatic process that that communication is. So as a by product of that, an ambassador has to be very careful with their speech because their speech is not reflective of themselves or their values or their priorities, but rather they are representing their, their government. In that sense, at almost all times, you know, when they are in public, they are representatives of that government and they have to be careful to always remember that their words are have a, a carry a weight greater than their own. They are a reflection of the nation for whom they represent and their voice is the voice that will be heard of their nation. They will live in a foreign land for years, sometimes decades, but they never become a part, to be, they never are absorbed into that host nation, but rather they always, no matter how long that they live there, they are always citizens of another nation. And so they are to be in that country, but not of that country. They don't belong to it, they belong elsewhere. And thus they have a unique pattern of existence where by intent, they are never to be absorbed into the culture or the value system uh, entirely of that, that host nation because always they are there to represent the values and the priorities, the citizenship of the nation that they represent. They are also there to essentially be showcases of those values and priorities. It's important that a diplomat live their life in a certain way, a, a recognition that their life has a significance uh, above, their, above itself, but rather that their actions, their deportment, they are a reflection of those values. And so they need to live their lives in a way that puts their, their own nation in the best possible light, that makes that nation to be one that is admirable. They also have authority. It is a delegated authority, but they are there as representatives of their government or of their sovereign. And so they carry the authority to, to execute deals, to speak with authority, to speak on behalf of their nation, and they are there to communicate the will of their sovereign, the will of their government. So I say all of that to give kind of a framework for the word that Paul uses here because he recognizes that he is an ambassador. That even though he is in chains at the time he is writing in to the Ephesians, he was a representative of heaven. And even though his personal life circumstance may have taken a turn for the worse, so to speak, he recognized that he was always on duty. And even as a prisoner, he had a higher calling. His circumstance may not look all that glamorous at the moment, but he recognized that despite that, he carried a, a weighty role, an important role. He was a representative. And so he prayed that despite his circumstance, he said, pray for me that I will be given boldness to speak. And he prayed for wisdom that when he opened his mouth, that the, the, the spirit would fill his mouth with the correct words. He wanted his words to be authoritative, to be well-spoken, to not allow his circumstance to diminish the reality of the authority he had as a representative of heaven. 
We see Paul throughout the book of Acts that, and you know, in his reflections in the epistles, that he is continually going into new nations and representing the gospel. He's there representing the church. Often he'll be the first contact. And so when people encountered Paul in a new nation, their early impressions of the church, of Christianity, of, of Christ, all of those things are largely formed by their initial impressions of Paul. It's an unfortunate reality that that Christians uh, often are the worst ambassadors of Christ in that the gospel is powerful, it's life-changing, it has authority, it is the answer to everyone's problems. And yet very often it is not a solution that people want because they've encountered a, a Christian who has done such a poor job of representing Christ. So they've, they've, you know, they've absorbed the title and said, I'm a Christian, but yet their actions are not representative of Christ and their words are not representative of Jesus. And so as a byproduct of that, people say, well, if that's what Jesus is all about, if that's what Christianity is all about, I want nothing to do with it. But Paul was recognizing that he had a higher calling, that even though you know there, this circumstance where he ends up in prison, that might cause him to have natural human rea reactions, to be angry, to be bitter, to be resentful of the way that things have happened. And when, you, you, when that kind of seeps into your spirit, it becomes indicative in the words that proceed out of it. Jesus says that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so what's happening in the internal man, the internal person has a way of starting to eventually seep out into the public eye. And so uh, Paul was, was praying for wisdom and, and boldness to speak, but to speak in the right kind of way with the right kind of words. It is a, a prayer, I believe, that we should absorb for ourselves because we too are called to be ambassadors. We also must be careful with our speech and our actions because they are communicating not our value system, but the value system of our sovereign. We represent him and thus we must represent his values. Uh, the language that we use needs to be the kind of language that our sovereign would approve of, that he would say, this is the way I want you to speak. Our actions in all situations are reflective not just of our values, but the moment that people know that we represent Christ, it means that not only is our life on trial, so to speak, but the gospel, Jesus himself is on trial because we are his ambassadors. And so that is a sacred and important calling we must take upon ourselves. Like the ambassador, we too are called to live in the nations where we are sent but to not be of those nations. No matter how long we live there, we cannot be absorbed into the culture. We must keep set apart. That's what holiness and part of its essence means. It means to be set apart, to be distinct from, to not be a part of. And so we are representing a different citizenship, a different way of life. And so no matter how long we live in the culture, we cannot become a part of the culture. We as Christians must be countercultural because we are representing an ambassadorship, something higher. We too have been given authority. And I'm thankful for that. The Bible tells us that when we are submitted to God, we're under His chain of command. We exercise the true authority. We have authority over the enemy. We have authority over circumstances. We don't have to just, you know, take life as it comes, but we can take authority in that and uh, because we have been delegated that authority as ambassadors. And finally, we are to communicate His will. Jesus said at the most crucial moment of His life, when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane and he is facing the reality of what's about to come at Calvary. His prayer, even though his, his desire for himself is to avoid the cup that was about to be passed him. He was talking about the, the torture and the pain and the death, all of those things that no human would desire, any human would fear coming upon them. And so his own will was obviously not to absorb any of those things, but his prayer was, not my will, but your will be done. That has to be part of our value system as well. Well, we recognize that we are here to do the will of the one who sent us, not our own will, our own purpose, but to follow his will, to communicate his desires, to communicate his purposes, to communicate his gospel, to communicate his value system. We have to remember that at all times, our lives are showcases of a higher calling. And if we do our job right, 
people will be drawn to us, not because of how wonderful we are, but because the value system that we have as ambassadors of heaven is a better value system. And this life is a better life. And Jesus is the answer, as the song says, for the world today. And if we do our job right, we just communicate that effectively and people are drawn to that. And as they are drawn to us as ambassadors, we can then direct them on to the one who can really transform their lives. We are called to be different. So in closing, let me leave you with one other wonderful passage of Scripture I think that kind of reflects what I'm talking about here today. Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2 and 9, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. We were once not a people. We were not special. We were not set apart, but we were called into the gospel. And then we were gifted with this responsibility, but also this privilege of being his ambassadors to show forth, to showcase, to proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So I challenge you today, be an, an ambassador of heaven, be different, be set apart and communicate the values and the will of him who sent you. God bless you. Have a blessed, wonderful day.